So here, let me go ahead in and launch the software uh, as a student. And you'll see over here on the left that I can select uh, a topic to work on. So here's all the topics that were in the, the PowerPoint. And then depending on the book that I'm using, I can select proprietorship or corporation and basically click Go. And then over here, you'll see that there are problems that I can work on, problems that aren't really much different than what you would see in the um, end of chapter problems in the, in the textbook. But we do some things that are uh, a little bit different here. Uh, what we do is uh, we not only uh, change the business scenarios, we change the wordings uh, within the various transaction statements, and we change the numbers. And so typically systems will just change the numbers and an algorithmic problem. We change everything up. And why do we do that? Number one, we don't want students to be able to cheat off of each other. And then more importantly, we want students to think about conceptually how to solve this problem. And so we don't want them getting into that sort of plug and chuck mode of putting in numbers without thinking about the problem. And so that's why we, we set it up this way. And then we also have this target of practice area over here where you can really narrow it down to specific transaction types. And I'll show you how that works in a second. But here, let me go ahead and launch the software. And what it does is it actually passes the problem over to an engine. So these aren't canned uh, problems where the, the feedback is fixed. And that's, that's important because we want to be able to give individual feedback to the student. So I'll go ahead and click on uh, one of these. We'll click on uh, prepaid 2,000 cash for a one-year insurance policy. And so within transaction analysis, we're working through the accounting equation, the accounting journal, and the accounting ledger. So here's my accounting equation. And again, note that there's no preformed fields for me. I have to build everything from scratch here. So I can go ahead and start entering my work. And in fact, what we, what we tell students, if they don't know where to start, we say, well, start putting something in, and we'll give you some feedback. So uh, maybe I think uh, prepaid insurance should go on directly, but I'm not sure. Well, I can go ahead and put it in and see what kind of feedback I get. So again, as a beginning student, if I look at this, we're trying to balance the accounting equation. So I have 2,000 on this side and 2,000 on that side. That looks right to me. Uh, I can go ahead and click check my work, and it'll give me feedback. And you'll see down here, just in a couple sentences, prepaid insurance is in the transaction, but it's an asset account, not an equity account. And then uh, further down, it says cash has to decrease, not increase here. So I picked up on two mistakes uh, that I made. Uh, and again, just in a couple sentences, context specific. I'm not being asked to go somewhere else to refer to other material. Everything I need is, is right here. So I realized then that this has to decrease, not increase, and then that this uh, has to move from equity under assets. So I can go ahead and add that in and put in my amount. And then, I, again, I can click check my work. And so here it tells me that I got it all correct, but as you can see down below, it tells me why my answer is correct and what it is that we're trying to do with keeping the accounting equation in balance. So it's very specific. So the numbers, the accounts, everything that the student needs is contained here for them. So that's one thing that we can use within the software is checking work. And students really like that ability. They like to get that feedback. Another thing we can do is ask questions, either before, during, or after entering in work. And you'll see down here that we have some questions around analyzing the event and potential misconceptions. I don't have to ask questions, but they're there for me if I want them. So for example, if I go to the next tab here, onto the accounting journal, the second of the three tabs, uh, same idea where I can start to, again, build my work, enter in my work. So I can put in an amount here and uh, click check my work again. And so here it, it gives me feedback. Uh, you're right, the cash should be credited, but since debits are always entered before credits, it should not be first. And you'll have all credits and no debits in your answer. So it picked up on, again, two mistakes that I made. One is this should be listed second, and two, I need to list something for debit. Another thing I can do if I'm completely stuck as a student is I can also just click show solution and have it take that step for me, and it gives me an explanation. Uh, and it also remembers the prior mistake that I made. Remember, debit's always written first in the journal and credit second, so it gives me that feedback. 
Now, if we scroll down, you'll see that the questions have changed, and they do change continuously uh, based on where I am in the problem as an individual and where I am just conceptually within the problem. Uh, so you'll see here that there are problems even around uh, questions around financial statements, uh, which is another topic um, available. Uh, there's questions around debits and credits, and there's even potential misconceptions. So I can ask a question, you know, wait a minute, if cash goes down, how can that be a credit? And this is a good, a good question because it, it points to something that's important. You know, we talk about students having prerequisite knowledge coming into a course, and, and a lot of times for beginning students, their prerequisite knowledge is basically their experience with, um, with the bank or with the credit card. And so their definition of debits and credits are different than the definition in accounting. So we have those kinds of questions that students can ask to help clarify. You can also ask questions, you know, how did you know that cash, cash was a credit? Um, because again, I clicked uh, Show Solution. I figured out cash was a credit by remembering that if an asset account is increased, that's a debit. If it's decreased, that's a credit. Short and sweet, right to the point, and it's very context specific so that the student can, can learn and then, and then move on. But let's say that as a student there was something about this transaction that gave me difficulty, and I don't know why. I don't know what accounts are involved. I'm just learning. Well, we also have this feature that says, give me more like this. And so if I click on that, what that does is, back on our problem selection area, rather than there being uh, full problems, we have these pay in advance for expenses, only those types of transactions. And we call that target of practice. And what we found out was that when students are first learning a topic like transaction analysis or adjusting entries, that this is actually a better way for them to go through because they can get repetition and master the material. And there's a concept called cognitive load theory that has been applied to um, this approach. And cognitive load theory basically just means, hey, when I'm working on a problem, my brain can only handle so many variables. And so when I'm working on a, an end of chapter problem, there's a lot going on here. And it's easy for me to get confused. This is where Quantum and Wiley Plus work together because you can come into Quantum and utilize that target of practice approach, master the concepts, then go into Wiley Plus to do those end of chapter problems. And we've shown that when, when students do that, not only are they able to learn the material faster, but they're actually able to transfer their knowledge. In other words, do transaction types that they've never done before. They're able to take that knowledge and expand it to other transaction types and solve them successfully. And that's how really why it's important to use Quantum and then the Wiley Plus, not only because of all the things that Wiley Plus has in it with the interactive exercises, end of chapter problems, all those good things. But that, that's what we've seen as a good formula for student success. Now, how does a student know um, if they're being successful as we're going through. Because you can see this sort of back and forth, you know, again, trying to simulate that instructor-student interaction that happens within the software. Well, as they're going through and working on problems and doing target of practice, we have this area called, how am I doing? And again, this was actually an idea that came from an instructor um, based on feedback that she was getting from her students. So we went ahead and, and added this in. But this is what, how am I doing, looks like. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a scorecard. And so when we're talking about mastery, we're talking about um, this, this page. You can literally tell your students, I want you to go out and master transaction analysis. And what they would do is essentially go out, here's all of my transactions, and here's the accounting journal, or the equation, the journal, and the ledger, just like in the software. Their job is to turn all these items green. And as you can see right now, I'm not a, I'm not a very good student. My mastery achieved is low. And I've mastered 28.6% of the content that's been introduced to me. So here you can see, you know, borrowed cash, I've mastered it. It does not make any more sense for me to keep practicing that because I have sort of the diminishing return. It's not going to make a bit of a difference in my, in my grade uh, on that one. Owner investment, I'm in progress on it, but I still need some more work. And if we scroll down a little bit, pay cash for supplies, uh, not attempted. So what I can do is, click on uh, pay cash for supplies, and what that does is it launches my targeted practice. So I can go through 
uh, work on a few of these, come back in, and then hopefully these will be turned green, and then I can move on from there. So that's what the student experience looks like.